Hello everyone, welcome to Mr. K Talks Tech YouTube channel. So today we are going to see about introduction to Azure storage. So this is the part 6 of Azure Beginner Series playlist. So let me start with the different Azure storage services offered. The first one is Blob Storage and then we have File Storage, Table Storage and finally Q Storage. Let us see all of these storage services one by one and I'll start with Blob Storage. So Blob stands for binary large object, which means that it is mainly used to store unstructured data. So what do you mean by unstructured data? So when you consider text, images, videos, uh, audios, all of these are considered as unstructured data. So we all know that in the traditional database, uh, the tables are stored in relational format, right? So we cannot store your text or images or videos in the traditional tables. So to store all these unstructured data, we need to use something called blob storage uh, in a shell. It also has unlimited storage, which means that data of any size can be stored uh, in the blob storage. There is no limit. And uh, as you can see here from this diagram, uh, firstly, before that, Azure doesn't provide individual services to create all of this storage. For example, it doesn't give you a service called blob storage or file storage or table storage or queue storage separately. Instead, it just gives one service called storage account. So, for example, if you want to create a blob storage, you want to create a storage account first. And inside the storage account, you can configure whether you want to create a blob or file or table or queue. So as you can see here from the below diagram, there is a storage account created called Sully. And in order to create your blob storage, you need to create something called container. So think of container just like a folder. Uh, inside your folder, you can have multiple files inside, right? Uh, so similar to that, uh, you need to create a container. As you can see here in the diagram, we have a container called pictures and movies, which acts like uh, a folder. So inside that container, you can have multiple uh, blob files. Uh, as you can see here, in the picture container, you have two blob files, uh, which is uh, an image file. And also inside the movies container, you have a video file. So this is the flow to create the blob storage. You need to have a storage account created first, and then the container, and then the blob files. So the next thing is uh, file storage. So it is a file sharing services. Think of this storage as a normal uh, SFTP server. It's acts similarly like that. And it, it can be accessed from anywhere. Uh, once you created your file storage, you get a URL and you can pretty much use that URL anywhere from the world. And it also supports hybrid file share, which means that this file storage can be used both in the on-premise and also in the cloud. For example, if you create this file storage in issue, you can use that file storage in your laptop, uh, which is the on-premise devices, just like how you, you normally use uh, the drives like C drives or D drives, something similar to that when you actually mount the file storage. So this leads to ease to use of this storage service, which is pretty much you can use like a normal uh, hard drive, which I uh, discussed before. So this is pretty much very simple to set up. You just configure the file storage in Azure and you can use it from anywhere uh, from the on-premise or from the cloud uh, using some uh, connection protocols. So the next storage is a stable storage. So it is a NoSQL key value storage. So what do you mean by NoSQL? Uh, it doesn't follow a fixed schema. So we all know that the traditional database tables follows a fixed schema, right? So if you create a table with three columns, you can insert the rows only with three values, right? So for here, no SQL storage, uh, you just store the data uh, in the key value format. There is no fixed schema. You can store three values or four values or five values, unless and until the structure is the key value format. And it is less cost compared to traditional SQL table and also it has high access speed. So to configure the table storage, you need to have a storage account first. So here you don't have to create your container like how we used to create in the blob storage. After creating the storage account, you can directly create a table. As you can see here, there is a two tables, customers and wine photos. And inside the tables, you have to supply the values in the key value format. As you can see here, here the name, and email, uh, it is considered as a key and you need to supply values for the corresponding key. 
for example for name john email john at gmail.com kind of that so the next storage is the queue storage uh, in queue storage it is mainly used to store data in first in first out rule we all know that queue works in first in first out format right and this storage is mainly used to, to store large number of messages it's mainly used for storing messages and also the messages stored in the queue can be accessed from anywhere and it also supports rest api so the setup for queue storage is pretty simple uh, as you can see here from this diagram there is a sender who transmits the messages and these messages are stored in azure storage queue so it will be received by the listeners in the first in first out manner for example the first messages that get stored is the first message that is going to be listened by the receivers so this is all about the queue storage and these are some of the uh, quick overview of all the uh, storage services offered by Azure. Out of all these four, blob storage is the one which is mainly used because of its capability to store unstructured data. Because we all know that in today's world, all the data is really valuable, not only the structured uh, data, right? Even the images or audios or the videos, everything is useful for an organization to get a big insights out of it, right? So we have seen what is blob storage. If you add blob storage to one concept called hierarchical namespace, then we get something called Azure Data Lake Gen 2. So Azure Data Lake Gen 2 is the most common or most popular storage solutions that can be used in Azure. So it is nothing but it is a combination of blob storage that we have seen already with a concept called hierarchical namespace. So what do you mean by hierarchical namespace? So that can be easily explained using this diagram. So the first one in the left side is a blob API, uh, which is the blob storage, which follows the flat namespace. So as you can see in the diagram, you can clearly see how the flat namespace is created. It's basically like a single structure, right? Uh, there is a file three, which comes from path three, which is a folder and path two. But on the other side, ADLS, APA, which is Azure Data Lake Storage, it follows the hierarchical namespace. As you can clearly see that it is in a hierarchical structure, which is pretty much similar to the directory structure that is used in the Windows operating system, right? You have a folder, and inside that folder directory, you can create multiple folders, or inside that folder, you can have multiple files. Hierarchical namespace is kind of similar to this directory structure, which follows the hierarchical arrangement of these different files together. So bringing this capability with addition to uh, blob storage makes Azure data like really powerful. That's the reason it is mainly used for more analytical workloads and stuff. I think now you have a clear idea about different storage services used in Azure. So in the next video, what we are going to say is like, let's jump into the Azure portal and try creating this storage account in your demo. So thanks for listening, guys. I hope you like the content and please like, share and subscribe and see you in another great video. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.